listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled, How to Organize Your Digitalization Team. So, you're considering a digitalization program in your oil and gas company. How should you organize that effort? I field a couple of phone calls on this subject, so it's clearly on the minds of those who are either hard at the effort or thinking seriously about it. Frankly, the considerations do not really hinge on what part of the oil and gas value chain is your playground. You could be in the upstream, the midstream, or the downstream. It doesn't really matter. Question low is how is digital different? Because it does factor into how you might organize. Digital is so new, particularly to oil and gas, that it is confusing, mysterious, and tantalizing all at the same time. It shapeshifts monthly, creating new solutions and ideas. How about brainwave sensors in hard hats to detect sleepiness? Well, already done. What about crowdsourced geology, uh, geologic interpretation? Happening already. Could we use low-flying drones to measure rogue methane emissions from gas wells? Well, that's being piloted, actually. How about using Bitcoin technology to automate the trade in LNG? Uh, That's coming next week. Could we 3D print replacement parts for field equipment? Those trials are already underway. So how are you supposed to organize a digital transformation team when the field of digital is so variable? Even agreeing a definition of digital is a challenge. And there are a few significant ways that digital is very different from the technologies of the past. First, digital solutions place far greater emphasis on the user interface and the user experience. That's why innovative solutions like Uber, Airbnb, and Amazon have no user training departments. The designs of these solutions is no accident. There are now disciplines, standards, and fields of study devoted exclusively to user design. Second, digital solutions display rapid growth trajectories suggesting that there is a second and related field to the user experience, which is the know-how to scale up fast. Easy-to-use digital solutions that require no training accelerate their adoption. For companies that sell technology, this means figuring out in advance how to deal with what could be very rapid growth. And finally, digital solutions don't yet come out of a box, like a product, ready to go. There's typically a process of trial and error to get the digital solution precisely on a problem. Incubators of digital innovation talk about POCs, or proofs of concept, and MVP, or minimally viable product. Economic models themselves aren't often uh, fully thought through. Each of these aspects of digital is therefore fundamentally different from the typical technologies that oil and gas purchasing departments might seek. You can imagine this dialogue with purchasing. C&P might say, here's all of our requirements. Can you meet them? And the digital startup would say, Perhaps, after the proof of concept, I might be able to meet some of them. Do you have a list of satisfied customers? Well, several have been satisfied with the experience, yes, but some have not worked out. Do you have a product? Um, Yes, it's minimally viable, and it will likely pivot to something completely different once we start working together. What's your annual maintenance charge, says contracting. Digital startup. I have no idea. I haven't built the solution yet. So, therefore... Designing a digitalization transformation team poses all kinds of interesting challenges. What if you tried to do this just through corporate IT? The launching point for many digital transformation efforts is to view digital simply as a variant of information technology. Internal IT shops likely already have put in place support processes for those ubiquitous digital devices, the smartphones and the Blackberries, and company-sponsored apps might run on those devices. They access corporate IT services like email or personnel data in the same manner as desktop devices, maybe through a browser, and they may be exposed to, to some cloud computing solutions. IT has probably already stood up a help desk for smartphone incidents, manages cyber issues like passwords and authentication, and mandates or even limits certain solutions to, for people inside the corporate firewall. For instance, my company frowns on collaboration tools that do not have built-in encryption because of the sensitivity of company data. All this suggests that IT could be a good place to house a digital transformation team. But it does not logically follow that because IT looks after the compute infrastructure, it should also be the leader in driving digital transformation. Corporate IT may have a huge workload already. Many oil and gas companies have hundreds if not thousands of separate IT solutions that demand care and feeding. Corporate IT will often impose their own list of requirements for digital that can serve as barriers to digital innovation. I've heard this kind of dialogue with corporate IT buyers and digital startups before. Corporate IT would say, can you integrate with SAP and all of the thousand other systems we have here? Digital startup, yes, we probably could do that, maybe in time. 
Is your solution fully compatible with our standards that originated in the 1990s? Probably, says the digital startup, but why is backwards compatibility to the age of mainframes relevant? Corporate IT, we don't trust cloud computing. Can we house your solution in our data center? Possibly, says the startup, with extensive modifications, and by the way, you'd have no ability to upgrade. Corporate IT, we don't have wireless networks in the field. Is that going to be a problem? Startup, it depends. Did you want your mobile workers to use digital too? Another path could be to drive digital innovation through the operations side of the house. The big money in oil and gas is in operations. Most, if not all, the physical assets and facilities belongs to ops and predate the rise of digital innovation. Operations has invested mightily in continuous improvement initiatives, asset management solutions, supply chain enhancements to drive better returns on assets. Most industry observers agree, however, that the biggest benefits in oil and gas from digitalization likely reside in ops. At a recent meeting I attended in Paris with the International Energy Agency, presenters outlined how digital innovation would impact operational performance. First was a 7 to 15% reduction in energy use. Next, a 30% improvement in asset availability. And finally, a 90% reduction in unplanned asset failure. But operations understands just how difficult it is to introduce change to plants that are running 24-7, with technologies that date back to the 60s in some cases, with crews operating on multiple shifts, plants that process dangerous materials, and have very small outage windows. Most oil and gas concerns will have an operations technology support team, kind of like corporate IT, but with a focus just on the operations tech. A digital transformation program could be part of this team's mandate. It's not a perfect fit, because operations technology is generally very stable, doesn't have the patching issues of commercial IT, doesn't have the exposure to cyber issues, as plants are often air-gapped or fully disconnected from the internet, and most of those plants don't have much exposure to cloud computing. How about driving digital innovation through a separate team altogether? Another model is to create a standalone digital transformation team. This team would have no involvement from either corporate IT or operations tech and task that team with driving digital forward. This has some merit. The team could potentially be free of any of the biases typical of corporations. It could take more of a clean sheet approach to digital, and it might not be bound by the usual budget limits, standards compliance, and legacy business alignment challenges. On the other hand, such a team might also create blissfully elegant but thoroughly implausible solutions that cannot be easily adopted by either operations or corporate IT. The team might come up with technology that hasn't even been invented yet. And an arbitrary separation of digital from the technologists can create its own dynamic challenges, from resentment to envy to feelings of inadequacy and of being punished by the organization for past technology issues. Next model would be to drive digital innovation jointly. In my view, this is the most appropriate design. Business users, corporate IT, and operations technology have tons of insight to contribute to how digital could impact the business, and they don't get too many opportunities to work together. Their strengths are, in fact, complementary. IT is better at cyber, but OT is better at reliability, and business users are better at business insight. The team could be supplemented with specialist skills imported for the job in key areas like user interface, user-centric design, scaling and scale effects, digital economics, and digital innovation, as well as in specific candidate areas for investment, like big data, blockchain, 3D, printed, uh, 3D printing, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, robotics, and new business models. Future high-impact solutions, like using drones to inspect and monitor gas infrastructure, rely on the business, IT, and OT working very closely together. Drones are great examples of OT technology, but they rely on commercial data systems for work order history, parts inventory, and corporate reporting. A combined team would be composed of up-and-coming business leaders from the organization and would ideally report to an executive that is tasked with driving digital innovation across the organization. That is, they are neither the CIO nor the COO. Digital is so different that standing up a digital transformation team really should include critical skills from the business as well as from both corporate IT and operations technology, supplemented with specialist know-how in specific technologies and capabilities. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments 
and visit us at digitalorgas.com.